Battletoads may be the most difficult game for the NES. I've covered some of the most challenging games on the system, including Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Ghosts and Goblins, and of course, Ninja Gaiden. But these games feel incredibly easy compared to Battletoads. Ninja Turtles only has six stages. Battletoads has 12. And those other games give you infinite continues. Not in Battletoads. You only get three continues with four lives each. So when you see that fourth game over, it's back to stage one. Despite its intense challenge, Battletoads is one of the best games ever made for the NES. The graphics are bright and colorful, and the gameplay is incredibly varied. What starts out as a simple beat-em-up quickly changes to a descent into a perilous cave suspended by ropes, an impossibly fast speeder bike section, a frozen ice maze, surfing over waterfalls, snakes, jets speeding through fire, climbing an elevator shaft, swimming with sharks, defusing bombs, a race against a glowing orb, and even a faux 3D tower into the sky. And bosses. Many, many bosses. Battletoads was developed by Rare, one of the few developers for the NES that wasn't headquartered in Japan. Rare was located in England, and was founded by brothers Tim and Chris Stamper. They started out developing computer games for the ZX Spectrum, but they felt that the future of video games was with Nintendo. They imported the Japanese version of the NES, the Famicom, and got to work on reverse engineering it. The Stamper brothers showed Nintendo of Japan's president at the time, Minoru Arakawa, some of the tech demos that their company was able to make for the Famicom, and he was extremely impressed. He gave Rare an essentially unlimited budget to make games for the NES. Nintendo would eventually own a large portion of Rare, and they would go on to make some of the most popular games of all time, like the Donkey Kong Country series and GoldenEye 007 for the Nintendo 64. But in the early days, Rare was already putting out big hits, like Wizards and Warriors, Snake Rattle and Roll, and RC Pro-Am. Rare wanted to make a game to take advantage of the popularity of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They had become so big in the late 1980s that they had spawned many imitators. Some, like Bucky O'Hare or Samurai Pizza Cats, were even mildly successful. Rare was hoping that Battletoads could be a full brand with action figures, clothing, and maybe even a TV show, although that idea never really got off the ground. Nintendo helped out by putting Battletoads on the cover of their 25th issue of Nintendo Power Magazine and devoted 35 pages of coverage to the game. They included maps of every level, and even a full comic book to explain the story. Rare knew they were making a very difficult game. They said that making it more challenging would make sure that people who purchased the game would get their money's worth. They certainly succeeded. I know people that have owned this game for 30 years and have never seen the fourth level. Rare may have felt that they went a bit too far, and when they released the Japanese version a few months later, they did scale the difficulty back a bit. The game was a big hit for Rare when it released in 1991, and it would eventually be ported to a number of other game systems, including the Sega Genesis, Amiga, Amiga CD32, Game Boy, and even the Sega Game Gear. In modern times, it was included on the Rare Replay Collection for the Xbox One. Today's critics still appreciate the incredible challenge that Battletoads presents. When IGN released their list of the top 100 NES games of all time, they put Battletoads at number 40. 
modern gamers will still have to deal with all of the challenges the NES is notorious for. You have a health bar in this game, but most hazards will kill you instantly, and in the vehicle sections, the blistering speed will truly test your reflexes. But what if I told you ways to get tons of extra lives so you'll have plenty of chances to try again? What if I told you how to beat all of the game's difficult levels? And if some of them are too challenging, I'll also reveal all of the secret warp zones to skip through them. What if I told you about a secret trick to skip the entire speeder bike stage? And what if I told you how to defeat every boss? Even the Dark Queen herself? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss any new episodes. Let's get started. Before we jump right into the game, let me talk about two ways to get a bunch of extra lives right from the beginning. The first trick is called the Toad Code, and while it is a cheat code, I highly recommend using it until you've beaten the game at least once, and then you can think about trying to do it without cheating. Just hold A, B, and down as you press start to begin the game. Normally you'd start with three extra lives in reserve, but with the Toad Code, you'll start with five. The other trick is a way to get more continues. Normally, you can only continue three times, and after that, it's game over. However, if you start up a new game, making sure to hold A, B, and down to use the Toad code, hook up a second controller, and press Start on Controller 2 before the game begins to join in a second player. Kill the first two Psycho Pigs, and then beat up player two until they get game over. Don't continue, just let the timer run out. Now you'll pick up the game from the beginning as player one, but when it comes time to continue, pick up controller two and continue as player two. Don't forget to hold A, B, and down as you continue to get some extra lives from the toad code. When player two dies, continue as player one. If you keep alternating like this, you'll end up with an extra two continues. By using these two tricks combined, you'll have a total of 20 more lives to start with than you'd normally have. 20 extra lives might still not be enough to beat Battletoads, but it will definitely help. Alright, now that you know how to get 20 extra lives, let's jump into the actual game. At the very beginning of level 1, there's a hidden warp zone you can find, but you'll have to move fast to be able to get it. If you double tap a direction like left or right, you'll start running in that direction. If you press the B button to attack while you're running, you'll do a very powerful charge attack. That's how you want to take out these psycho pigs at the beginning, so Take out the left one and the right one and then hurry up and jump to the top of that cliff where those flashing stars are and that will warp you to level 3. Now I do want to show you how to actually play the first two levels and I don't even recommend that you use that warp zone. If you get good at the first two levels, you can actually come out of them with more lives than you started with. That's something that you might want to do, but if you use the warp zone, it's good for practicing level 3, which is the turbo tunnel where the speeder bikes are. When you defeat these walker enemies, you'll be able to pick up one of their legs and use it as a weapon. These pull weapons are very powerful and give you a good range to your attack. Take advantage of it when you're attacking these gray psycho pigs and then try to line up with these flies and press the B button to extend your tongue and eat them. They'll restore a point of health for each fly you consume. Down here you'll fight a dragon enemy and if you hit it off the right side of the screen, it will die in a single hit. Same with this one. 
You can actually ride those guys, which is fun, but it's much easier to just take them out by knocking them off the right side of the screen. These psycho pigs can be knocked off a ledge, and then a third one will come out of the ground, knock him off as well, try to catch some of these flies, and then walk to the middle of this platform and jump off to get the one up. And then it will be time for the boss. The Boss Walker. The Boss Walker is actually very easy. Just stay away from the laser shots and it will launch a rock. Press the B button to pick up the rock and then just quickly press it again to throw it at the Boss Walker. It'll only take three rocks to send this thing to the scrap heap and then it's on to stage two. Stage two is called the Wookie Hole and it is way different from stage one. We will be suspended by a rope and rappelling down a shaft the entire time. In this shaft, we'll fight some raven enemies, and if we can bounce their dead bodies around enough times, we'll get a whole bunch of extra points, and if we can hit one eight times, we'll get a one-up. You also get a one-up whenever you make 100,000 points, so we have a lot of opportunities to get extra lives in this level. Trying to bounce it off the wall is the best way. I got this one going here. There we go. See how many you can get. Now it's actually easier to hit the ravens once you have the saber weapon, which we'll get later. And when you see these Saturn toad traps, you want to hold over to the right until you start flashing, and then press B to launch the wrecking ball attack. You can do that from either side. Down here you can grab some flies, and this raven can kill you in a single hit by clipping your rope, but when you defeat him, he gives you this cutlass weapon. And this is the way to really get the extra lives. It's a lot easier to bounce the ravens once you have the cutlass. So try to stay towards the middle. That's probably the best spot for juggling. And don't let those ravens clip your line, you'll instantly die. Down here you'll need to charge up the Wrecking Ball attack to take out this Retro Blaster enemy. You definitely need to take the Retro Blasters seriously. Never linger in front of them for very long. They shoot electricity that will kill you. Down here, I like to just use the Wrecking Ball on these Ravens. They can be difficult to try to juggle. If you think you can juggle them, go for it. And then you want to head to the right and then quickly to the left to avoid these electrical hazards. And then take out this Raven with your Wrecking Ball attack. Hang out on the left, then the right to get around two more. And then you need to get right up near where the electricity is to hit that Raven. He's dangerous. Try to take out these Ravens while they're on their perch. If they do get free, use the Wrecking Ball attack. They can be very dangerous if they're flying around at you. Take out these two Saturn Toad traps with the Wrecking Ball attack after you try to juggle that Raven. Here we go, you can probably hit them two at once. Good shot. You can try to juggle some of these birds. But there's a lot on the screen at this point, so it gets difficult to juggle them when another one is attacking you. If you can get one by itself on the screen, that's a good time to try to start juggling. Here comes a gray Retro Blaster, and that one hit me. He didn't kill me, but you can easily get caught by him or he'll hit you a second time. Take out the Saturn Toad Traps with the Wrecking Ball attack. Got a nice two for one there. I'm going to try to kill one of these and then juggle the other one. And down here you just need to go right, left, right, left, right. And that will take you to the end. The first two levels were easy, but stage three, the turbo tunnel, spikes the difficulty off the chart. Many people have gotten this far in Battletoads, but few have actually passed the turbo tunnel. I'm going to show you how to beat it. It's actually not as difficult as people make it out to be. The later levels in this game are much, much harder. These guys are called Vaders. They're actually supposed to be the monsters from Space Invaders. 
If you're not careful, they'll steal your health, although if you hit them, you may be able to get them back. Take out these scuzz enemies. And try to grab these flies. Be careful when you jump over these gaps. Make sure you hold down the A button long enough to get across. And once you knock this guy into the ground, be careful not to be too close to the edge when you kick him with your big Battletoad boot. If you're too close to the edge, you might actually fall off. Over here, this is where the speeder bike starts. So get ready for it. Now you see that kind of brown line in the upper track? That's where you want to be when you're on the upper part, and slightly below that is where you want to be when you're dodging downwards. You don't want to go all the way to the top or all the way to the bottom ever. You want to stay more towards the middle. That'll make it a lot more easy to dodge the walls quickly. We hit the first checkpoint, so we're doing good. This white ramp you just have to drive over in the center and you'll automatically go over to the next part. Same thing here. Then dodge some walls, hit that little ramp, you'll automatically make it to the other side. But watch out, there's a wall so you don't want to be in the top there. If you're having trouble with the turbo tunnel, I want to recommend that you use the NES Advantage joystick controller. I don't recommend using it for the rest of the game, you just want to pause and tag that controller in. Carefully pull out the other one and switch to the NES Advantage. It actually makes this section way easier. It's much more responsive than the standard NES D-pad. So if you're having trouble with this, try switching to the NES Advantage controller. It's also useful later in the game for the Klinger Ringers level. And you can actually jump over that big wall in the center. It's kind of a weird thing. Hit these ramps. Little tiny tap jumps over those walls. Now, over here, you want to get under two walls, and then you have to jump to hit that ramp that's up in the air. These are called rat pods, and the third one, wait for the fourth one to come by and avoid both of them at the same time. And in this area, you need to jump and hold the A button until you make it to the next part. That's tricky. Now here you want to remember, stay towards the middle and just little taps up, down, up, down, up, down. And then there's three walls to jump at the end. And that's it. You've beaten the turbo tunnel. See, I told you you could do it. Now before we go on, this is that fast section at the end of the turbo tunnel, but in slow motion. I'm showing you this because if you crash into the 10th wall, there's a warp zone there that'll take you to stage 5. But I don't actually recommend that you use that warp zone, and I did promise at the beginning of the video to show you a way to skip the bike section, so this is what that looks like. This is the bike skip. It costs you two lives to do, but if you do it correctly, the screen will flash, and you'll be taken to stage four. So here is it again in slow motion. When you jump over to the spot where the actual bike is, advance the screen slowly, then jump towards the back of the bike and double tap backwards as soon as you get on it, and then hold up. If you do it fast enough, you'll fall off the bottom of the screen. When you respawn, be holding up, and as soon as you land, you need to do a little jump and then double tap right to scoot off the edge. When you hear yourself die, stop holding right, wait a beat, and then start holding left. It's a very difficult trick to do. It actually is probably easier to just beat the turbo tunnel normally, but it is a fun thing to try for. When you start this level, which is called the Arctic Caverns, you want to quickly double tap right to dash under the stalactites that fall. Jump on this ice block to stop it, then pick it up, do a few short hops, and throw it at the wall at the top. Duck underneath this snowman snowballs, and then stand to return a snowball at him. You need to make sure to avoid his snowballs, and then throw one at him while you're standing. If you're holding down, you'll throw the snowball downwards, and then you'll miss. Just avoid this ice block and jump over it a couple times and the wall will be removed for you. 
pause and wait for that stalactite, then you want to hurry as fast as you can through this section. If you don't move quickly, you'll be overwhelmed by this snowman very fast. Hit him once, and then when he comes back up, hit him again. And then hold up to throw the snowballs at this wall, and we will hit a checkpoint. The checkpoints are actually very generous in this stage. Watch out for that spike back and hang out over here to avoid the ice block. Then make your way down and quickly sprint to the right. Wait down in this spot and the snowman will actually take out this wall for us. We don't have to endanger ourselves by picking up that ice block and carrying it over here. Carefully make your way onto this moving platform over here and then duck the snowball that comes your way then jump all the way to the right to avoid this falling stalactite. Wait to go over these wooden poles until you see two snowballs come by quickly. Attack the snowman at the end, then jump over this pole and quickly duck. You'll slide under a snowball and make it to the other side. Take out this snowman and hold up to throw the snowballs at the wall, and we'll hit another checkpoint. Down here, we can jump onto this moving platform and then hold down to duck under the stalactite. You probably want to grab that one up, it'll really help you out later. Be careful to avoid this spike back here, and when you jump over this one, don't jump too high or you can actually hit the one above you, which would be a disaster. Stop this ice block, and you want to carry it all the way over here, right there, and throw it. That'll get it going fast and destroy the wall on the other side quickly before that spike back can sneak up on you and get you. This spike back is easy to avoid. Try to get these flies to restore some health. Jump over the spikes and quickly jump at the bottom and take out this snowman. That's actually a tough jump. You need to jump at the last second there. Get under this stalactite and make your way through this wall by waiting for three snowballs, then jump over a fourth one. So one, two, three, jump. Duck, duck, duck. And then the wall will be removed. And here is another warp zone. You wanna bring the platform down and then jump, 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 jump. And that will take you to stage six. Now, I do recommend that you use that warp zone. Stage five is tough and so is the end of this level. This spike back will make the wall pop up. So you need to time your movement to get right under it. It's tough. Jump over. Right here, a small jump and hurry under. If that wall falls on top of your head, it'll crush you and you'll die. And that's it. That's the end of stage four. Stage 5 is called Surf City, and it's another one of those vehicle sections, and that's why I recommended that you skip it with the warp zone in Stage 4. But hey, if you want to play all the levels, I won't hold that against you, so jump on your surfboard, it's time to avoid some logs. The first one, avoid it at the bottom, then go to the top, then the bottom, then the top. Stay at the top, that one will move out of the way, then go to the bottom again, and then I usually just go all the way to the top and try to scurry over to the right to avoid these last few logs. Usually that works. Staying in the middle will grab you a one-up, and you can avoid these whirlpools by being at either the top or the bottom of the screen, whichever part they don't actually occupy. The logs in the whirlpools are not instant death, but they do significant damage which will add up quickly. Over here there's some more of those vaders. And that one actually got away with one of my health points, which is kind of annoying. This is a tall walker, but it fights just the same as a regular walker. And when you defeat it with a couple headbutts, you'll be able to grab the robot leg and wield it as a weapon. You'll definitely want to make sure you save that leg. It is very useful against the boss that's coming up. You can destroy these items for some extra points. Over here you can get some health back by eating the flies. And here is the boss, Big Blag. You'll drop your stick when you first see Blag, but that doesn't mean you can't pick it back up again. You just want to get him stuck in a corner and just start beating him down with a stick. He's very difficult if you can't do this strategy, 
but if you know about it, he's actually very easy. Now here's some bad news. Just because we beat the boss doesn't mean that the stage is over, so grab your surfboard, it's time to avoid some mines. The mines are easiest to avoid by hanging out at the very bottom of the screen. There are very few mines that even come down there, so most of the time you can just hang out at the bottom. Just look for ones that are staying on your level and you might have to move up a bit to avoid them. You will have to move to the center to hit the ramps, and this one up is tough to get. I just want to focus on avoiding the mines and don't even worry about it. Stay at the middle to hit a ramp. And down here, we'll just hang out at the bottom again. And that's it for Surf City. Next up is Karnath's Lair. And this is probably the most difficult stage in the entire game. Luckily, we don't have to play most of it if we use the warp zone. The first part's pretty easy. Just jump up onto this first slow-moving snake, climb over, and wait at the end here until it's almost through and then jump up onto the next one. If you fall off here, you won't die. You just need to go back onto the first snake. Make your way to the left and then jump onto this blue snake. Wait on this part of it until it's coming back and then jump onto the head and the head will double back to the right so jump on top of it again and through the outdoor. Now here's where that warp zone is. Quickly climb to the top of this snake and run off the end of it. This warp zone will take you to stage 8 and I highly recommend that you use it and I'm going to show you what you have to do if you don't. Come down here and drop down onto this red and green snake. You got to avoid these spikes. They will be instant death. Climb up this orange snake. Wait here and jump across. Once again, we'll wait till the last second to jump up onto this orange snake. And then we have to jump over three spikes and jump up to this green snake. Wait here on the left until it covers over that spike. Then jump from here back onto the head. And we'll wait till the last second to jump up again. This one moves very quickly and will take us to the goal. But that's not the end. Oh no, that's not the end at all. Wait here and jump back onto the head as it comes around. Head over and climb up the snake and then wait for it here at the wall. You're going to drop down onto a snake below. Stay here a bit and wait for the snake to come back up and then jump towards the side of it. Wait till the last second to jump onto this one and then hang out on the left side because the snake's going to come back around. Climb up on top of it and then wait here in this box. You'll drop down below and then you'll have to jump over the spikes. Be careful not to hit that one above you. That one's tricky. Jump up at the last second onto this fast moving green snake and avoid the spike. There's no spikes on this yellow and black snake, but there are on this red and black one. Then jump up onto the silver and black snake and through the exit. Here's a very tough room. This is the last one here in the snake pit. Catch this purple snake as it goes into the wall on the left and jump up to make sure that you have enough time to get onto the silver snake. It takes a little bit longer to come out of the wall. Jump up again to make sure you get on the blue one. Hang out above those spikes and then make sure to jump at the last second again to get up on the yellow and pink snake. Now you'll want to wait for a bit up here and wait for a bit down here until you see the tail, then jump over and then jump off quickly. That part is very difficult. You need to land on the head as it comes back around at the bottom, so you need to jump off at the last second, but you don't want to hit the spike either. It's tough. You'll jump up here at the end of this snake and then quickly over those spikes, but between the other ones. Uh, here's another very difficult snake. You need to wait till the very last second to jump off there and make your way down to the bottom then climb up through the snake and through it again and you can finally hit the outdoor and be done with this very, very difficult stage. We go from snakes to planes in stage 7, Volkmeyer's Inferno. Volkmeyer's Inferno is practically another turbo tunnel 
and that's one of the reasons why I suggested that we use the warp zone in stage 6 to skip over it. The beginning of the stage is actually very easy. You can take out these scuzz enemies with a single hit. They're just setting you up though. The more difficult part will come later. Make your way across these platforms and take out the scuzz. In the comic book that came with Nintendo Power, Volkmeyer was the character that designed all of the traps for the Dark Queen. So he was kind of like the bad guys from the Hunger Games that are sitting behind the computer creating hazards. We never actually fight Volkmeyer in the game. His character reference here is just for flavor. Carefully make your way across the logs. Once again, this part is very easy. We just have to get through some scuzz enemies here, and then there's going to be more of those rat pods. This time we're not on a vehicle, so they're a lot easier to fight. They'll actually kind of come right to you, and you can just punch them. Over here are more of those Vader enemies, which will try to steal your health. Take them out, and make sure you catch the pieces of health that fly off when you kill them. Take out a couple more rat pods. There's a few flies if you need them. And head over to the right. I like the way that the background looks here. Eventually it will burst into flames, so I like the way that they do the transition. And here we are. Jump into your jets. It's time for another vehicle section. Stay at the far left of the screen to maximize your reaction time. You need to go through the small gaps in the electricity. If you touch the electricity, it's instant death. This part I don't think is quite as difficult as the turbo tunnel was, but it is another difficult vehicle section. These ones that close on you, you need to be towards the front of the screen to avoid. And to get through these fireballs, you can just kind of hang out here in the lower left corner. It's rare that a fireball will come down there that you actually have to move out of the way of. I think there, there was only one this time yeah, so far. Just stay down here, don't worry about the one up. Yep, there was another one. So just watch for a fireball that's down on your level. But for the most part, those are easy to avoid. And these missiles, same thing. An occasional missile will come over that you have to avoid, but if you stay down here in the lower left corner and just watch the top left of the screen for missiles that are coming your way, you should be able to easily avoid these as well. Alright, a few more missiles, hang out in the lower left. But after this, we're going to be back to dodging electrical walls, so that part's a little bit tougher. These ones open in front, but then quickly move to the front, because those ones close on you, and then back again, and then to the front again. Alright, here's the super fast part. Just like in the turbo tunnel, we end with a super fast section, so stay all the way at the back of the screen, and you may have to memorize this part to make sure you can do it. It gets even faster here, and it makes sort of like an M shape. Down, middle, up, way down, and that's it. We are on to stage eight, the intruder excluder. This level is very difficult. You're climbing upwards the entire time, and if you fall back down, that's instant death. Make sure you grab the stick off the wall at the beginning to take out the sentry drone, and when you're jumping up through these moving floors, you'll be safe on the far left or the far right. The gap doesn't go all the way across, so you won't fall down if you're standing there. Jump onto this spring and then jump up to the left. When you go through that gap, you need to be cautious. There is electricity there. And over here is another one of those sticks that you can take off the wall. If you die ahead, this is where you'll respawn. And so that's a good spot to grab one. Be careful, sometimes you get hung up on the right side after you grab the stick. 
You need to do a quick jump at the end of that girder to avoid those balls. And up here we'll find a one up. When you get onto this spring, just hold down A and then press left. You'll glide off and you can easily jump back over. You can duck underneath the electricity that these sentry drones shoot and carefully tweak your jump as you come up there. You can kill these snot balls if you have the stick, but if not, you need to rapidly press left and right to throw one off your head that's stuck to you. Remember, you can duck the electricity and be careful as you jump across. Getting hit by that electricity only deals three damage, but oftentimes it'll put you in an awkward position that'll get you killed anyway. make your way upwards. The electrified gaps will only deal you damage when they are fully extended with electricity. When they have that little warning spot there, it won't actually damage you. Carefully make your way up here. This is another checkpoint right below us. And now if you're on the right side of this bouncy spring, that gasser actually won't hit you there. And the sucker on the wall over there won't be able to pull you in either. Jump up here, and this part's very difficult. You need to quickly dash after that gasser fires and then jump up and duck underneath the electricity. That part has killed me many, many times. Head up onto this girder on the right. Now you need to time your jump with this gasser. The gassers are instant death, and these suckas will try to pull you in. They're instant death too, but you wanna to try to make sure to get that extra life it will really help since you may die a lot of times here and that will keep your life total the same. This part's also very difficult. You want to wait here on the right side and jump behind the gas and then jump up through the floor. That's the best way to make it through there. Avoid the electricity here. The gasser won't go all the way to the right here so if you stay close to the girder you'll be safe. And then we just need to avoid a few more electrified gaps and we'll have made it to the boss, Robo Manus. Oh yeah, this very difficult stage has a boss at the end of it. For a boss that only has two frames of animation and really only two attacks, Robo Manus can be very difficult. You can duck to avoid his gun attack. And the other thing that he does is whenever he jumps up in the air, if he lands on you, that's instant death. The best way to avoid him is to duck in the left or the right corner of the room. He won't land on you there and you'll be able to avoid the gun that way. After he does about two gunshots, he'll just kind of stand there and wait for you to attack him. Now as the fight progresses, he'll stop doing that, but at first it's free hits. So just hang out in the corner, wait for him to shoot, and then get him with a charge attack whenever you see an opening. You can try to juggle them a little bit in the air like that, but sometimes that's just getting a little bit too fancy. If you miss it and he lands on you, you'll lose a life. If you lose a life here, that's okay. You'll come back and the fight will continue. You won't have to start the boss over again. But you need to hit him, I think about 21 times, and that will finish him off, and we'll be on to stage nine, the Terra Tubes. There's an easy shortcut you can do at the beginning of the Terra Tubes. Just hold down A and left as the stage begins and you'll pop out of bounds. You'll see that the green area is like water but the blue area is air. So just come down here and then come up into this pipe. It's possible to skip more but it gets very difficult to do at this point. I do want to show you what we skipped here so let's go back to the beginning. Make sure to duck. You don't want to get hit by that electricity, and over here we can grab a propeller to slow our descent and go all the way to the left, then all the way to the right to avoid the spikes. Down here we can duck to avoid this mechano droid's electricity that he shoots, and we need to take these guys seriously. They can do an attack that can kill us in a single hit. The path curves back around to the left here, and there's another mechano hiding behind the pink part in the foreground very sneaky. Come up here, we'll grab another propeller and then head all the way to the right, then the left, and then back to the right again to avoid the spikes, and we've arrived at our first checkpoint. Run to get ahead of this crazy cog and then stay up against the wall here so that it doesn't hit you as it crashes into the water. 
You'll need to avoid those spikes as you drop down, and when you get to the end here, wait for it to come by and then jump over it. You'll want to get a running start at the beginning of this crazy cog section and jump to stay out of the water as much as possible. Make your way back up across the top and head over towards the wall so it doesn't hit you as you drop down. Hold left here, then right, and then we're going to hold left again and right again to avoid the spikes in this section, and we're going to hide out in this little corner while the cog comes through. This is a checkpoint. Take a second to get a feel for how your toad swims, and just because we're swimming doesn't mean that we can't fight, so you can still punch the enemies. When you jump out of the water here, you'll have a bit of exit velocity, which will help you get over the spikes. Avoid that Electra eel and take a big jump over that spike. Over here, there's another one of those Mechano droids, so punch him, and then you just want to walk off the edge here to avoid that spike. Don't try to jump over it. This enemy is called a Hammerfish, and if you just punch him, you could stun it. You can kill them if you punch them enough times, but it's not necessary to take out that Hammerfish. Swim around these spikes. You don't want to use a lot of swim strokes, just a couple taps of the button will do it. And then you can quickly avoid the shark over here in this next section by swimming fast. So come up and swim fast. You can even go between those spikes, but that's probably an unnecessary risk as we need to escape a cog here, and that was a checkpoint as well. Now we're gonna do a trick down here. Just swim off and then quickly swim up again, and you can get underneath the cog. I usually aim for the bottom pink pipe. That's where I'm trying to swim towards. And if you're behind the cog, this part is very easy. You can just take your time, make sure the cog stays ahead of you. We'll be able to easily get to the next checkpoint. So just swim behind the cog, and there it is. This is the last checkpoint in the stage. Now over here you want to punch this shark so you can grab the one up, and then you can use the propeller to float downwards here. Grabbing that one up each time if you die will save you a lot of lost lives. This rubber ducky is called a steel beak, and he is extremely dangerous. It can kill you in a single hit. Take them seriously. This one I like to just jump over and then hurry to the right. There's another steel beak over here which I will pummel with my fists until he flips over and then quickly jump past him. You do not want to mess around with those guys. This swimming section can be very difficult, but what you want to do is just take the time to kill off that hammerfish, and then you want to lure this shark back down to the floor where you killed the hammerfish, and you want to kill the shark down here in the same way. Make sure you give yourself enough space between you and the spikes to finish off the shark. Once the shark and the hammerfish are defeated, there will be no more enemies chasing you through this area, and it will be very, very easy. Now at the end, you want to stay on the left side so that you can jump over the steel beak there. Jump way over the steel beak, then grab a propeller and go to the left, then the right, left, to the right, to the left again, and then we're going to go all the way to the right, and we've made it to stage 10. The Rat Race. So there's an easy way and a hard way to get through Rat Race. I'm going to show you the easy way first. Now, as soon as you start the stage, you'll hear the fire of that security drone, but the one at the bottom actually shoots first, so don't be fooled. Wait until you see the top one fire before you drop down and duck underneath its shot. These gassers will kill you instantly if you touch the gas, so make sure to drop down behind it after it fires. And then the rat will appear. This guy is called the Giblet, and you need to beat him to the bottom of the screen or he'll destroy the bomb and you'll lose a life. The Giblet has to run back and forth across the platform, so by staying in the gaps you'll be able to get down there much faster than him. Wait here when he gets to the bottom and give him a quick punch and then as soon as he touches the wall on the right, you want to double tap and press B to destroy the bomb and then double tap and press B again to hit the giblet. If you pop him up into the air, then double tap and press B again when he gets close to your foot, 
you'll give him a big Battletoad boot, and you'll be on to stage 11. Now, what if you can't do that? So you just destroyed the bomb, and the giblet drops down. Well, then you move on to the second part of the stage. There are two more speed courses that you'll have to endure, with a bomb at the bottom of each one if you want to get through this stage without killing the giblet. You will have another opportunity to take him out with each bomb that you face, so always give that a try and see if you can end this level faster. This course is much more difficult. You don't have a lot of margin for error either. Remember, you don't need to double tap to run. Your toad will automatically run whenever the giblet is in play. Ugh, messed up a little bit there. Really need to be fast on these sections at the bottom. Hurry through and the bomb's on the right side this time. And once it's defused, we will go to the third and final part of Rat Race. And this part is very, very difficult. There is almost no margin of error at all this time. And here's where it begins. So get moving. Head down, try to stay in the gaps as much as you can. You don't want to touch the sides of the girders at all if possible. Oh, messed up a little bit there. Alright, he's gaining on me. The rat will always start to gain on you when you have long areas to cover, and you'll be able to gain on him on these small gaps that you can just kind of fall through. It's okay if he passes you there, you will have another opportunity to gain on him right at this part. But if he gets too far ahead, well, then you'll be in big trouble. And after that, there's a boss. General Slaughter. General Slaughter can be quite difficult if you don't know what to do. You want to do a ramming charge attack on him and then quickly back off. If you don't, he'll hit you with his horns. But if you keep doing this, He'll kind of stay in the same spot for a while, although he will get a bit more lively after he takes a bit more damage. Just keep backing off, charge in and hit him. Back off, charge in and hit him. If you keep doing this, you'll be able to get a lot of damage in before he starts becoming active. Alright, well, he's going to move a little bit more now, I think. Here he comes. Alright. So, same thing though. Hit him and back off. Hit him and back off. And that's the key. If you keep doing this, it'll be very difficult for him to get you. He's not very fast. So just keep a lot of space between you and the general, and make sure to time your charge attacks well enough so that he can't counter you. After a few more hits, this guy will be history. So just keep repeating the same pattern, and make sure you give yourself a good bit of space between you and him after you hit. Alright, it's getting real fast now. When he starts getting very fast, you'll know that the battle has almost concluded. Oh, oh no, he got me there. If he gets you, it can be very dangerous. You'll be knocked out for a few seconds, and sometimes he'll come up and deal even more damage to you. But that's it. I'd say the General Slaughter is a good bit easier than the Robo Manus that we fought in the previous level. And with that, we're on to Stage 11, Klinger Ringer. Oh man, I wish I could give you some better advice for being good at Klinger Ringer. This stage is very, very difficult. You're being chased by a hypnotic orb called a Buzz Ball, and the Buzz Ball is a little bit faster than you, but it doesn't corner as well as your toad does. So you need to hold down the direction that you're moving to maintain your top speed. As soon as you change directions, you need to quickly switch to that direction with your thumb. So down here, we're going to quickly hit left, up, left, down, left, up, left, down, left, up. You're just going to be holding those directions in. Never let go of the D-pad. I do have some advice if this stage is troubling for you. If you have the NES Advantage Arcade Stick controller, that actually makes this stage a whole lot easier. The arcade stick is a bit more responsive than the NES D-pad. You won't have to hold your thumb on that direction the entire time. 
which actually can start becoming a pain if you have to repeat this level a few times. There are no checkpoints in here, so you do need to do it in one complete run. I just suggest that you need to practice this one a good bit, try to memorize the course as best you can, and when you get to the end here, it's time to fight the boss. Now it's time to fight that buzz ball. It'll float over to the left side, try to catch it with a charge attack, and then get up on top of it and start mashing the B button until you pick it up. Once it's in your toad hands, carry it over to the third arrow on the right and toss it towards the right wall. You want to try to catch it in mid-air as it falls with a charge attack. If you're feeling frisky, you could try to hit it with two or even three headbutts there, but your best bet is to just try to get it with one, and then walk over on top of it and mash the B button until you pick it up again. If you don't do it perfectly, the buzz ball may escape, and you'll have to try to catch it with a charge attack so that it'll fall on the ground and you can pick it up again and resume the pattern. This guy can be very difficult if you don't do this pattern, and if it gets away you're likely to lose a life or two, but you certainly don't want to have to repeat clinger ringers, so take your time and carefully fight the buzz ball. You should be able to do it. And that's it. We've made it to the final stage, the revolution. If you hold down the jump button and left as you begin the stage, you'll float up at the beginning and you can grab this flagpole weapon, which is very useful for fighting this hornhead enemy. Once you get up here, you need to make sure to jump over this ball and you want to be jumping towards the left. Wait until this green platform just appears and then quickly jump across. The very last one fades out before the others, so you need to move quickly on those. These yellow platforms will fall out from under you when you jump on them. And up here we have another horn head to fight. I like to wait until he does his little charge attack and then hit him with the pole. If you don't have the pole anymore, you can also use a charge attack. And if you drop your pole while you're fighting him, don't try to pick it up again until the horn head is defeated. He will definitely capitalize on that and deal you a bunch of damage. Here's another one. All right, we have some more springs to climb up here, and at the top is a bouncing ball that we need to avoid. Make your way over to the right, take out this horn head, and once he's gone, there will be a spring platform that we need to use to get up to the next level. So jump onto that, and bounce up here. This enemy is called a Swell Cheeks. It's like a weird green cloud. Now if you hang out up on top of this second spring and just start mashing the B button, you should be able to take out that one with your stick. This horn head is a good bit more dangerous. The red one will open his mouth and if you would do like a charge attack or get too close to the open mouth, he can actually suck you in and that's instant death. There are very few checkpoints in this stage so you certainly don't want to die here. This Swell Cheeks can easily be taken out by moving to the left and hitting him from behind, but this second one you just want to avoid. Quickly get onto the brown platform and move up. Wait when you get to the top so that you don't get hit by the attacks from the two Swell Cheeks that are shooting down at you. Over here we'll fight another green Swell Cheeks. He's kind of the boss of this area. You can try to do a charge attack or just mash the stick attack when it gets near you and if you don't have the stick just use punches whenever he's flying around the bottom like that but whenever he gets up in the air I like to try to hit him from behind that's a good way to deal some extra damage without having to worry about getting killed by this guy once he's defeated get up onto the spring carefully watch out for the ball above here as you navigate that falling platform here we'll have to experience our first moving platform on the revolution. When you're jumping to a platform that is moving itself, you want to jump a good bit early. When you are on a moving platform and jumping to a still platform, you want to jump when they're right about on top of each other. So this one's moving, jump early. Now we're on a moving platform, jump right when they're almost on top of each other. Same thing up here. 
right now. And then we'll wait until this one gets close to us and jump. Here we need to clear this spiky ball, so wait until a good time and get up there. You need to get to the flagpole as quickly as possible so that this storm cloud doesn't blow you off the tower. Start jumping up these green platforms and wait here. This is a checkpoint, but wait for this one to reappear and then very quickly jump up. That last one will disappear out from under you if you don't jump very quickly there. Now we need to finish the rest of the stage to the boss without dying or we're going to go back to the bottom here. So get onto this flagpole, wait for this cloud to blow his air, and whenever he's done it moves up a little bit and a yellow platform will appear below you. You need to press down to let go of the flagpole a little bit early so that you can fall onto that yellow platform. Take out this horn head with the flagpole you just pulled off the wall. And remember, when you're on a moving platform, that you want to jump whenever the one above you is almost right on top of you. This swell cheeks can be dangerous. Try to hit it from behind when possible. Once it's gone, you'll be able to move up again. And there's going to be another one of those flagpoles for you to grab. If you're not grabbing the flagpole, it is instant death when that cloud comes up and starts blowing on you. This time you have to drop down to a spring platform below and then bounce up to another flagpole to survive the cloud attack. This time you're going to need to drop back to the spring that you were on before and then you'll find another spring on the other side that you can jump to to get up to the next section. And this is the end. You want to go very fast up and to the left here. So all the platforms are going to be to the left until you make it to the next level. Here, this next one's left, but then there's one to the right, and that one drops out from under. And if you go fast enough, you'll avoid that yellow swell cheeks, and it'll be time to fight the Dark Queen. The Dark Queen is very difficult, but I do have good news for you. If you die up here and you still have continues left, you'll actually continue at the Dark Queen. So she's almost like the 13th level. What you want to do is try to avoid her when she's in the tornado form, and then you want to get behind her and do charge attacks from behind. You can also catch her in the air once you get her with one charge attack, but you can see if you attack her from the front, she'll get you with a knee attack and you'll be knocked down. Try to avoid her whenever she's in the tornado, and try to get her from behind but whenever she's like revving up the tornado and you don't see the yellow part of it yet she's vulnerable then and she's certainly vulnerable when she stops spinning so whatever way she's facing when she stops spinning try to get behind her and do a ram attack it does take a good number of hits to take out the dark queen so do your best not to get hit by her and pick your spots you know, you want to look for a good opportunity to hit her. Shouldn't take too much more at this point, and it looks like we maxed out our score, which is pretty awesome. Yep. And that's it. We've completed Battletoads and rescued our friends, Princess Angelica and Pimple. Make sure you're not standing in the middle of the screen after you kill the Dark Queen. She does come up in that tornado form, and if you're standing there, you will get hit. So watch out for that. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. Well, I hope this video was able to help you finally beat Battletoads, and put an end to the Dark Queen's reign of terror. If you did, make sure to give it a like, and make sure to subscribe for more videos, because there will always be more despotic monarchs to depose, and that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.